Okay, so welcome back everybody to the afternoon session of the ESCAPE Summer School. My name is Axel Donat. I'm going to be chairing the session um, this afternoon. So this morning uh, we had the keynote um, on the Open Science Initiative by, um, by Rachel. And today the session will be already a first hands-on on getting you set up for the whole school and the following hands-ons then on individual packages, etc. Uh, we'll have Enrique Garcia from Lab um, going through the setup with you. Um, again, if you have any questions, just use the corresponding Slack channel. And then we're going to collect the questions um, or maybe interrupt or make a short session um, to answer those. Okay, thanks everyone for coming back. And Enrique, take it away. Okay, perfect. Thank you, <clears throat> Axel. So um, welcome to everybody. <clears throat> As uh, Axel said, uh, well, I will first of all introduce myself a bit. I'm Enrique Garcia, a data scientist working at Lab here in ANSI uh, since uh, June 2019. See uh, for a uh, couple of projects. For first of all, I'm working for the Skate project in the technical implementation and helping in the technical implementation of the OSSR. That it is the uh, Open Science Service Repository. Is basically the repository that will help all the publications, entries, digital uh, um, resources that uh, will be later passed to the well, that will be in the repository. And I'm also working for the City Analyst Consortium, helping in the development of different um, analysis pipelines. Um, I'm a physicist uh, with a master of astrophys on astrophysics. Um, that I do well. Basically, I um, I I I was I'm I'm a PhD, I was a PhD candidate on submillimeter submillimeter astronomy uh, on IPAC. Then I moved to to a consulting company uh, for a year, and then I decided to return to uh, to to science. And here I am working as a data scientist in in in, in LACA. So uh, the overview of this uh, lecture and Hanson will be very uh, will be very straightforward. We'll see uh, step by step how to set up the escape environment school from scratch. Okay. So um, just just have already done it. So that's it. <laughs> that's all my presentation. Uh, any questions and doubts? <laughs> of course not. I mean uh, there will be a lot of probably I hope not, but there might be some problems. So we'll go through the steps um, that we have to do to install this, uh, this environment. So first of all, one thing that we need to do is to install Conda. Um, Conda is an open source uh, package man management system. So it is basically as a, a, a software that basically controls the different versions and the different uh, software that you can install and you can move between environments. So you can have different versions of different softwares installed in your computer without any problem between them. There are two kind of um, versions of, Con of Conda, that is Anaconda and Miniconda. Anaconda is the user-friendly version, although it is the, the, heavy, the heavy version uh, that comes with, uh, with, an, with an integrated graphical music interface, nice uh, integrated development environments, and a lot of uh, already pre-installed packages, and it, it is around 3 gigabytes, so we will not install that one. We'll go mostly for Miniconda, okay? so. Um, in these sessions, it will be like it will be half uh, presentation and half hands on. So, I will go through exactly um, all, all the steps. So, here on my right, you should have see a terminal, a fresh new uh, environment, uh, and uh, uh, that we will install everything in it. So, the first thing that you can do it is just type in Conda um, uh, on Google and go to the link in any case all these links are in the at the end of the presentation in case you cannot open uh, the link uh, well, I mean, of course here you cannot open the, the link and the presentation is uh, in indico on the um, on the web page of the uh, of, on the pages of the uh, of the school and, and i think uh, well, i think you can find the, the presentation Okay, so once we are in the, um, we have gone to the, this link, basically you, the only thing you will need to choose, sorry, it is the, um, the OS installer that you, that you need. 
If you are using uh, Windows, you will, you will go to your to these installers. If you, in case of Mac, you will use these ones, and for Linux, these ones. The Python version uh, will suggest to install the last one. I mean, there's no difference in the in the version. The only thing that will happen is the base environment system that you will uh, uh, the base environment that you will install. It will contain this Python uh, version. Uh, in my case, we're gonna do the. Um, the the, uh, the hands-on with uh, with uh, Linux and Python 3.9. So basically, we'll just, uh, for example, copy the link address. We go here and we'll just do a get w get of this uh, link. So we just type it and wait that um, to download the uh, uh, the mini content installer. Okay. Once we have installed it, I mean, uh, you can also click and click and and. and and, and it will be automatically installed, and you, 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 will, you will just need to open a terminal and do the following. It is to do bash and um, the name of the file that we have just uh, downloaded, okay? So we'll just click enter, and we'll just follow the instructions. And it will tell us, the welcome to Miniconda. Okay, we'll say yes. We'll continue. Then this is the license agreement uh, that we can read. I, suggest you to read it, but I have already read it. I will say that, yes, I agree with all the, the license terms. We have to, if you just type enter, it will be automatically say no. So you have to type yes and enter. And here then later it will, say, it will suggest you where to install um, a mini command. I will recommend you to install it in the place it suggests you, unless you have a good experience already with, uh, with packages and mini commands. So we'll just click enter. <clears throat> and this, uh, and it will start uh, downloading. So um, the process it is exactly the same for all the rest of uh, OS, OS operating system. Sorry, so okay. On the right hand side, you can see all the um, all the packages that it has installed at the beginning when installing uh, installing Miniconda. And uh, one thing that it will ask uh, it is if we wanna uh, if we wanna. If you wish to install it, to select Miniconda 3. So we'll say yes in a moment. So the process for, for the rest of uh, OSS is exactly the same. If we have uh, Windows, we'll just click in, in this link. And for Mac, we'll do, uh, we'll do similar. Here we click yes. OK, perfect. It will appear something, uh, something similar to this. Um, I'm in a special environment, so I'm working inside a Docker container. So you just you will just need to open a new uh, terminal. I just need to um, do a little trick. Basically, in the moment that you open a new termi terminal, sorry, you will see now that a base name has appeared here that it indicates you that Miniconda is on the base environment of uh, on the base environment that is the one that is installed uh, by default okay that's it it is uh, pretty much easy we have already installed uh, miconda so this step is uh, is done um that's it um okay the next point will be to install git um so well git is a version control system for software uh rachel this morning already introduced it a bit and tomorrow there will be uh, a very nice talk by by Max, that I recommend you all, even if you are uh, users of Git, to, to follow it. Um, so once more, what happens or how can we install it? So we have seen that there have been already some problems. Um, uh, so if we, if you just go to the uh, GitHub page of the school, you see that here there are some instructions of how to install Git. Okay. In case the uh, the slides and the information that it is on on, on the GitHub the repository are equi equivalent, basically you need to if you are working on Linux you need to do a sudo apt get update and then install Git. If you are working on uh, macOS, you can use the Xcode, and on Windows you can go to this link and follow the uh, follow the instructions. So <coughs> <coughs> sorry, I will I will. I will assume that everybody has already installed um, Git. In case not, it is really straightforward. It is just following these uh, these uh, instructions. 
Okay, um, in any case, once more, you have the links here in the presentation that if you cannot open these hyperlinks, they are at the end of the, uh, of the presentation. Once we have uh, mini Conda and Git install or Conda and Git install, what we have to do it is to clone the school repository. So the GitHub school project is in this link, okay? And you can basically copy and, and paste this, um, this uh, link directly, but we'll, I will show you what are we doing exactly. So if we go to the to the page uh, to the GitHub repository once more, you will see that this is the uh, this is the how it looks. Um, so you will need to go to code, click on code, and then you can click on HTTPS and click here, and you will just copy the link. Okay. This repository is a bit. Uh, um, particular, so uh, you can also do directly uh, git clone recursively. In any case, if you have already cloned it, I will go through this uh, this way. That it is, I mean, there is no problem at all. We have done it this way. So the only thing we need to do is to do git clone and paste the link of that we have just copied. Okay. So we see now that uh, well, we have our mini conda start that we have um, that we can already erase. So we have the Miniconda uh, installation that we have just um, installed and the school uh, and the school um, GitHub repository that we have just cloned. We can go to the to this directory. Okay, so here we have all the information that is inside. And uh, if we have already cloned it, we have do, done it recursively. The only thing that we will need to do is to git to copy this um, this command that is a git submodel update init recursively. Uh, the only thing that happens with this is because we are using submodules in the in the repository, so it is a bit more complicated. Okay, so that's it. Um, the next thing that we will need to do, okay, um, is to set up the uh, the con environment. Um, so, um, okay, the first uh, step, and um, there are basically two options to to install the con environment. We'll suggest to follow option one. In case you have any kind of troubles, uh, you can use uh, option two. They are completely equ equivalent. The only difference is that option two might take a bit longer. Okay. And in case on, of option one, what we are doing it is installing an, a package called Mamba that is a, a bit more faster than Conda to install, to resolve environments and to install things, okay? So another thing that I would like to stress it is that if you have already um, installed a Anaconda before, you might need to do a Conda update uh, all uh, before, uh, before doing these steps because you might have faced some troubles. In any case, as I will, I will say later, you can um, write on the Slack channel or open uh, GitHub issues and that they are here. Okay. Before open, I, and I will go through that in a in a moment. Okay. So um, we'll basically uh, copy the uh, the command that installs Mamba. So we'll just uh, and we are what we are doing to conduct is to install Mamba in the base. Um, environment and minus C means the channel through which we are installing it, that it is just as a software provider that it is con, con, uh, con the forge. So we'll just wait a bit um, until, uh, okay, you will see that uh, is, uh, Mamba is installing automatically. This should not take long. And, um, and in a few moments, we will uh, We'll have uh, Mamba install. Okay. Once we have Mamba install, uh, what we will do is to create the uh, the escape environment that will be that basically contains of the software software needed to run and work with the lectures that we will be giving and, uh, and and to have everything installed with the correct persons and, and everything compatible. So we'll once more copy the uh, the command Mamba environment create, meaning that it will create a new environment. Uh, with all the information that it is in this environment YAML file. So, as I said, the only difference between these two options, um, the Mamba environment create and the con environment create, is that Mamba usually goes a bit faster, but they are completely equivalent. So, no matter what, you can both, uh, if you have problems instead using one, you can use try to use the other. Okay. Um, 
Um, this will take a bit, not much, uh, depending on the internet connection and how fast Nama can resolve, but this should uh, install everything um, uh, automatically in, uh, in, your, in your computer. Um, we'll just leave a moment there, everything uh, getting installed. Uh, uh, the output that it is showing now, uh, in Conrad is nothing, it's, it's telling you all the versions and all the um, all the packages that are uh, that are being installed, okay, and this is the progress bar of each of the, of the packages. Um, okay, if you have also installed already installed or created a, a school environment that you could have called in any in any other how, you can always do a conda activate about the envi that environment and then a conda environment update minus f environment the piano that it will uh, update it also, uh, also the the environment in, in which you are. Okay, um, so some conda useful commands. I mean, basically, you have the uh, nice uh, cheat sheet here, the official cheat sheet of, uh, of conda, where you have a, sum a summary of all the of all the commands. Uh, I will just go through this very quickly. Um, so, for example, if you want to create an environment with a specific version of uh, Python because you don't like Python 3.9 for whatever reason. Or you are working on a, on a side project that needs whatever you can you can, you can type something like this. Um, to install or update a package, you just need to to write con install or update. You can also list all the packages that they are installed in this environment by a con list. Also, imagine that you are working in different um, with different projects and you have a specific needs or request for one or another uh, project, so you can. And you have already found a, a, um, sorry, an environment that everything works. You can clone and save that uh, environment so that you don't break anything with any other update or any, or, or, of any packets. So you can uh, just clone the, uh, the environment. And once more, if uh, you have already installed a, um, or you have already an environment, you can update this environment by uh, by uh, conduct an environment update. Um, I have to mention also that pip, that it is no more than the packages, packages in the style of Python. Uh, it is another um, uh, package uh, manager. It uh, allows to install things in, the, in this environment too, although conflicts might appear, so use care for it. So I mean, this is just an example. It's, I mean, please don't do this in the environment that you're just installing. We can have a look, which is uh, this is just an example. So we can just type conda list numpy to numpy, sorry, to see the version of this uh, library. And so basically, we will see the version, uh, the building, and the channel to which one uh, it was installed. And we can basically say conda remove numpy and uh, install, install any specific version uh, of numpy using uh, pip. Uh, and then uh, have a look what uh, what. Uh, it has started. In any case, this is just an example, and this is just to be mentioned that please uh, don't do this in this uh, environment. Okay, so if we go back to the environment that we have just installed, we see that there are, there's a lot of uh, libraries. Um, these will be all the libraries that we will basically need for, for following the courses and all the hands on exercises and everything. Uh, and everything. And, and that's pretty much all. In the moment that we have this, we can say just come the activate school. We'll see here that we have basically changed from base to a school, e school, your escape school uh, 2021. And uh, now we should have uh, all the uh, all the packages that we have just uh, installed to, to come down. Okay, so basically that's all. Thank you for your attention. Uh, once more, uh, don't hesitate to contact any, me or any of the teachers uh, in case of any problems. Before posting anything, please go and have a look to the GitHub issues uh, because there are a lot of uh, issues that uh, they are double and repeated. So basically, uh, you can find the solution of your problem here. Otherwise, you can also use the Slack channel. Uh, but for real installation yeah, issues, open the uh, admission on GitHub. And last but not, not least, we can have a look and see, for example, and, and make a li little test and, and see if uh, the installation has gone correctly. So if we just type which Python on the terminal, um, we just go to home uh, 
the return of the Skype it's Python, we should find um, the, uh, this is the common part where we have this miniconda, and after this, we should find the, um, uh, something that says environments school 2021 in Python. In this case, what it is, what we are taking, it is the Python version that we are running or that we will run uh, points to the version that basically is installed thanks to this environment. Okay. So that's pretty much uh, all I wanted to say. You have here the, uh, all the links in, in case you couldn't open any of them. Um, so uh, I hope you don't have any lot of troubles installing it. And if you have any kind of question, that's all, please. Thanks a lot for walking us through the, the setup. Um, there were quite a few questions on the Slack channel. I think we still have time to address a few general ones. I think the more specific ones we're just gonna directly answer on Slack. So there was one question that appeared multiple times. Um, so if I have an Anaconda installation already, do I need to download and install again Miniconda? No, May, not at all. So if you have uh, either Miniconda or Anaconda, uh, just uh, will be, you can work on, on that installation. That's it. Um, the, the software is the same, everything is the same, so nothing to do. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, there was another question just to whether you could provide a bit more information on what is Anaconda actually. Okay, so uh, Anaconda is no more than a package manager, uh, as I said. Uh, um, an, an open source package man management system. So the only thing that does it is to um, organize correctly and set up all the installation. So basically, when you, inst when you install a package, uh, what you are doing it is copying that the information that contains in a package in certain parts of the computer so that the computer knows where to look and find, find that information so that later it runs, run, runs it. The problem is that, for example, we will need Python 3.6 in one for one project and uh, Python 3. Point, or, for example, uh, Python 2.7 in an old project that you have just arrived to your um, to your institute or that has been that it has been a, a project for ten years ago and it, it was developed in Python 2.7. But then on your on other side projects, you are working on on new Python uh, 3. So basically, you can have uh, different environments, so different different ways of organizing all those uh, versions and softwares, so that they don't crash between them. Okay, so all the packages that you you will need, um, so that you can work with them correctly. So you can have in one environment uh, Python 2.7 with specific versions of Matplotlib, and NumPy, uh, whichever other uh, uh, libraries and softwares, and then you can change. Um, to another uh, environment where you have uh, a completely different installation of all these packages. The point is that if you, in case you don't have those environments, I mean, Conday is not the only open source, uh, sorry, the only um, a package man management system, there are others, but um, there might crash or, I mean, if you don't have none of them installed, if you try to install one version and then the other, you will probably face a uh, lot of troubles and a lot of incompatibilities and there are, also packages that they don't uh, work along one each other, so you need a specific version. So it's just a way to organize the versions of packages, let's say. Thanks a lot. Maybe in addition, I think there's this, this common misconception uh, that Conda is a Python package manager, and this is not true. Um, I think just Conda will basically install any package into a Conda environment. While, for example, a tool like pip is a Python package manager, and this will install any Python package, or just or will install a Python package into any environment. Um, I think that's probably the main main difference between those two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think looking at the Slack, I think the remaining questions are really specific, um, and this we're going to try just to answer on Slack directly. Um, I think then we can probably continue just with the general introduction to working with Python and notebooks in general. There was the feedback on, on the Slack to just go maybe a little bit slower so that people can follow along sure. okay, so, uh, with typing the commands and everything. Okay, perfect. Uh, so I will, uh, I will go a bit, uh, a bit slower. Okay. Um, 
perfect. So um, okay. So we will just jump uh, into the next. Um, Maybe we can give a very short five minute breaks uh, for some people to finish the setup. Yeah, that's uh, what I was gonna say. In, uh, so we'll start in five minutes, okay? So uh, uh, the link, uh, the, the YouTube link, it, will, it, should, it should not change. We will not stop streaming. There will be just a five minutes uh, pause uh, um, for finishing the installation, okay?
Okay. Um, yep. Yeah. Thanks. So we... Okay, then we're gonna continue with the general introduction to Python and working with, with notebooks. Um, again, we'll be active on the Slack channel. So if you still have problems with the installation of the and, and setup of the environment, um, we'll keep on answering the questions. If your setup was successful, then you can already follow along, I think, with what is Enrique is, is showing to you. Okay, Enrique, please go ahead. Okay, so um, sorry if I went too too fast in the last um, in the last lecture. I will try to slow down a bit now. In any case, so as I said, all the information is in the slides that you can find or in, in Indico and uh, and in the in the page of the of the school. So, and also, well, don't hesitate to to open any any question through Slack or the GitHub uh, issues. So in this next uh, lecture, we'll go through a very basic introduction, so extremely basic introduction of uh, Python and notebooks and Jupyter notebooks that we'll see what are they in a moment. So it is really um, basic users uh, level uh, with a bit of uh, some nice uh, features that I will present at the end. But uh, it is uh, a way to basically um, try to get everybody, all the people that are not very used with Python and Jupyter notebooks, uh, to get a basic level so that they can follow without no problem uh, the school. So in this uh, following lecture, it will be once more a bit similar to the, uh, to the previous one. So it will be half uh, presentation. And I also will be uh, giving examples and showing how to do things uh, at the same at the same, same time. So I will start with an introduction on on Python, uh, and then I will uh, I will show the different uh, let's say Python. Uh, they are not not environment, but Python uh, interpreters or uh, I, um, Let's say the the way we can we can work with uh, with Python, okay? The uh, and and well, basically this this consists on Jupyter notebooks, Jupyter lab, and at the end uh, binder. Okay, so a very quick introduction about Python. Um, I don't know if you all know it. I hope yes. In many cases, it will be the uh, one of the main program languages in which in which we will be working in this school. It is a multi-purpose, uh, object-oriented programming language. I will not go. In, I will not give a, a lecture on how to use Python. There are very nice lectures on some um, on some um, modules. Uh, I, I don't know if it is tomorrow or the day before, uh, given by by Tom. Um, so I also suggest to follow them because uh, you will learn, and we all will learn a lot of a lot of interesting things. So basically, Python it was uh, released in 1991. The main developer was Guido Van Rossum. And basically, it has been a, a it is a programming language that it has become very famous in the in less than 30 years. So in in, two, in the 2000, Python 2 was already really was released, and 2008, Python 3 was released. Uh, currently, there there was some dead date for Python the Python 2.7 version, but then it was postponed because there was um, a huge amount of, uh, let's say, uh, code uh, worldwide that it was uh, done in, in Python 2.7, and there are currently the last version of uh, Python 3.9, uh, uh, Python 3. Sorry, it's Python 3.9. Uh, they basically work very similar. Uh, I will not really show the difference between them, uh, but uh, if you know how some things in Python 2, they should not say it's a lot in Python 3. And that's it. Okay, so uh, let's begin very, very, very uh, slow. So uh, the easiest way to run Python, it is just by using the Python interpreter. Uh, that we just, um, this is basically the, the engine that runs uh, Python. So basically it works like a terminal, like a shell that you will type things and Python will interpret them. And if they are correct, they will, they will do something with them. Just, we'll just, sorry. Um, 
would start about it, we just need to type Python, okay? And in this case, if we just type Python, we will see how, um, okay, this way, much better. Uh, we will see that the, the, uh, the Python version with which we are working, this should be uh, the Python 3.9 version because, okay, I will just go a bit behind and think that first thing we will need to do is to you imagine that we have just opened a new terminal where we can go, we can move to the directory that we are we have all our, our work in my case is this one. We see that we are in the base um, conda environment. So the best first thing that uh, we can do is conda activate. And if everything was uh, installed correctly, um, now here we should see the uh, Escape School 2021 environment. Okay. So the way to check if I mean if you have able to install uh, if the um, if the if the creation of the environment has gone to, till the end means that uh, the installation of your environment should be uh, should be correct. Okay. So once more, if I type Python here, I will say I will see that. Uh, the Python version that I'm working is the, the 3.9, that it is the one that I have it. And here uh, we can do, uh, 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 you can start basically coding in Python, okay? So uh, for example, we can just import uh, a kind of library. So we can import uh, the NumPy uh, library. Uh, if there's, if you just type enter and nothing happens, means that NumPy, NumPy has been uh, correctly installed. Uh, also, we can do like uh, from a, a, a library uh, or a module import something. So in this case, from the math, um, math model, we are importing pi. So now we can basically run pi. That basically the only thing that tells tell us it is how much pi values. And then we can do uh, whatever we want. I will start coding. Um, we can see that a small uh, example we can define a radius and compute the volume the volume of a sphere and then just print the result um, and then also uh, for example with this python uh, interpreter or any basically with any kind of python interpreter we can also run scripts um, important thing to get out of the python interpreter it is to type exit with uh, with parentheses if we, if we don't type it says Need to type them okay so this will be out and if we have uh, basically a, a little small a script that uh, says that uh, that computes the volume of an sphere we can write it inside a file um, ending by dot pi that means that it is a file that can be run by python and run what it is called a script that it will be uh, that we can do like this. So we'll tell Python to run this uh, this script and it will basically run all the code that it is inside. In this case, it, it just computes the volume and print uh, the resulting, um, and print the resulting, uh, well, uh, the result basically. Okay, um, so this is this terminal. You see that it is well, like, quite flat. It doesn't. Um, it is nice to work with it. With it uh, to do quick examples or quick uh, tests if you want to take for take for example if we have any kind of library imported or correctly we can just open Python quickly import it and see if there is any kind of problem. If ever there is a problem, we will see a big amount of. Uh, so, for example, uh, um, I'm not sure if I try to import uh, a gamma pi. Um, in this case, it says uh, I don't have gamma pi installed. Uh, or, uh, or, uh, so, you, you will find an, an error similar to this one. Um, okay. Um, the next. Uh, Thing that I would like to show it is IPython that it is no more than I would say an evolution of, uh, of the of the previous shell that we have seen. It is a bit more user friendly. It has, as I will, I will see in a moment, uh, code complete completion uh, and highlights. So it is a bit more nice to work. It will point uh, if things are not working correctly. 
Um, so it is a bit more user friendly in general. Um, what it is going on here is basically that uh, the IPython the IPython works with the IPython kernel. That it is no more than the, um, a, a Python kernel. So that it is the en engine that runs uh, the code. So basically, in a, every single cell that it will, will see, will see it in a moment. Um, the uh, the kernel behind the, uh, behind it yeah, that it is no no more than the Python installation and the Python and the Python software, software are is running uh, all the information that you have put in this uh, cell. Um, to launch it, we just need to to, to type ipython, okay, um, and we will see that already the interface has uh, has changed a bit. Once more, the only thing that it is uh, it is pointing to Python 3.9. So basically, what it is saying it is that the engine behind this interface it is Python 3.9. Um, if we do similar things, so now it will highlight the text. Uh, um, it, it works basically exactly the same. Um, but what I said before, as I mentioned before, it is that there are currently there are these uh, cells that you can see them uh, with an increasing number of all the commands you have you, that you have uh, um, typed into Python. So there are a few nice features about these cells that I will show in a moment later in Jupyter notebooks because uh, they they basically share 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 the the. Um, the Python kernel. So once more, the kernel is just the, the engine that it is running behind every, every time that we are uh, typing anything in, into Python. Into Python. So, um, um, so that's it. Um, the cell magics. I will. I will also show it in a, in a second in in, in Jupyter uh, because they serve the same thing and it is more visual to see them uh, in a moment. Okay. So uh, let's say that the next uh, evolution of IPython or uh, or a very or, um, the next evolution of, of of the Python interfaces it is what it is called Jupyter Notebook that originally started as a as a uh, well it was a side project of the IPython project that precisely had uh, an IPython note, notebook project too. Um, um, so why it is called Jupyter? Uh, you, Jupyter is because uh, the core supported languages are Julia, Python, and R, and that's where the, the name uh, comes from. So in a second, we'll, we'll see that basically this once more the the same. Uh, we will do we will not do nothing more. We will just be working and running a Python, a Python but with a different interface and a different uh, let's say environment. Um, so I will show you in a moment how to open a, a Jupyter notebook, what are the IPy files, and how to uh, work with them. Okay. So if I get out of uh, IPython just by typing exit, the way to launch a Jupyter notebook it is uh, after activating an, our our uh, code environment that contains the, soft, the all the software that we we'll need, and also Jupyter notebook should have been installed here. So basically, if we type Jupyter and then we do tap tap, we'll see all the different possibilities that we can run. Um, in this case, the only thing that we need here is to type Jupyter notebook, okay, in a terminal that. Uh, that uh, in once more that has to be uh, in an, embar in an environment that contains uh, of the of the school, but uh, the, uh, our environment, the school of the environment already contains the Jupyter notebook uh, software. So in the moment that we type enter, we'll see that something appears. Uh, it says that. Uh, uh, there is uh, opening and basically to access this notebook we can basically copy and paste this URL into a, into a browser but usually it should be open automatically okay 
So uh, this is the first thing that we will see when we open a Jupyter notebook. It is uh, a, a file. It is a file organization uh, a system, and we can we have just it shows uh, the content of the directory where we have uh, launched uh, Jupyter. Okay. So basically, through here we can. Um, we can move and travel around. Uh, we can, uh, there's a, a, maybe a comment that we will need to, to make. So basically, Jupyter Notebook, it will open in the directory where you launch it. And you cannot go up into those directories. So if you want to move around, uh, you will need to close uh, Jupyter and open it again. So the way, the first thing to do it is how to close Jupyter. And you can just click quit, OK? And this will, this will quit uh, Jupyter automatically. Then we can close the tabs, okay, and go back to our terminal. I will see that the, um, we have gone back to, to the original terminal that we have. So for example, we can go, we wanted uh, to, to move uh, from one directory to another. So now I have moved to another directory where I have all the content of, of this um, lecture. And from here, I can, I can once more launch Jupyter Notebook. And in this case, we will see that it will take, it will exactly the same. So it will open this interface in where instead of being inside the directory that I was before, now I'm starting to run this, uh, this uh, uh, file browser, let's say, in, in, another, um, in another directory, OK? So here, uh, the first thing that we can see is the content of the directory. And from here, we can uh, do things with them. So basically, this is this, uh, let's say, environment, this browser, you can uh, open any kind of uh, files if they are so for, uh, uh, so if, um, if, if, the, if you have basically the, uh, the software that opens these files, um, but specifically what it does it is open and work with uh, Jupyter Notebooks. The Jupyter Notebooks, we can recognize them because of this symbol and at the same time be, uh, because of the extension that it is a dot .ipymb uh, that it is a, a Python, uh, Python notebook, okay? So um, the way to create a new uh, Jupyter uh, notebook would be to click in directly in new, and here we see that first we can also find, uh, uh, sorry, find uh, create uh, new files, folders, and new terminal. This will, I will basically you can try and play around if you are not used to Jupyter, but um, uh, I, um, well, the file, the creating folders and file text, it is, uh, it is, so if we just click here, we'll see that it is uh, a new file text. And then basically save and that's it and then we'll close and it basically it will open everything in your uh, browser so let's uh, open a new python if we just once more if we just click on new and click on uh, notebook python 3 it will open this uh, this new notebook okay so this is the interface that we'll see uh, that we'll see okay I will go through all of them in a moment, but, basically, but as any other program, you have the different tabs where you can explore them at work for, for different functionalities. So you can you have, you can create new notebooks, open already uh, existing notebooks, make copies, uh, close them. You can, uh, these are all the functionalities of the cells that I will go in a moment. And also the view ones, um, you can we can insert cells above or below that I will also show in a moment. The cells, there are certain types of properties that we can do with them. Also, also kernels, widgets, and also here in case of any kind of doubt, you can uh, you can type like you can click on help. The keyboard shortcuts, in case you have uh, any doubt, and um, see what you can do with uh, only well, with the keyboard uh, shortcuts. In any case, everything that you can do with them, uh, you can also do with these uh, little buttons that I will show um, in a second. Okay, so this is just a brand new uh, Jupyter uh, Jupyter notebook that will not work with uh, uh, with it. 
nicer reminder. So basically, if uh, if I if I want to save the changes, I will first need to basically save as and rename them. Okay, to uh, to rename a Jupyter notebook, you can just click on the on the name or go to file and uh, rename. So if this was just a test uh, test notebook. Yes, click rename. We can basically save it, and then now we can directly close the tab. We will see that here there is the test notebook that we just opened a moment ago. It has a green, um, a green icon, uh, meaning that it is still running. Uh, with, if we click on it, we can basically shut down it. So this means that there is a Jupyter kernel running uh, uh, inside this notebook. Uh, so basically, a, um, a Python a Python kernel running uh, running. So basically, this is a, a, a process that if we don't stop it, it will be running in the background. But I mean, we uh, the best thing to do it is basically to just click on it here and click on shutdown. Okay, now the icon has gone from green to to gray, and everything, everything now everything's okay. Here, if we click again, we can just duplicate, rename, move, download. So this interface, I think, is quite a straightforward to understand and see how, how we can work with it. And then in, in case any kind of doubt, don't hesitate. OK, so uh, to open um, an a notebook that it has that already has some content. The only thing that we need to do is to click on it. Okay. The thing is that if we have an open, uh, if we have an open uh, a, a Jupyter notebook uh, interface, and we just click that, do double click uh, on the on the file. So if I just basically open a new, okay. Um, this is the screen where I have everything. Okay, so if I just click, if we just here, if we have, so this is the file, the different files of the Python notebooks. If I just try to open in a file browser this and double click with it, nothing will happen because it will only be open and run uh, if we have a Jupyter notebook uh, uh, running. Okay. Um, okay. So if we go, so this is the the um, the tab where we have basically launched the notebook, and, uh, and and we see that this is still running. This is the uh, the uh, the notebook that we are going to go through in a moment. Okay. So um, this thing that we see here is once more a cell. In here, uh, the cell can can have different kind of types. The way to see how which is the type of this cell it is uh, by going and clicking on cell and clicking on uh, cell type. We can see that the first thing that we can do is like select code markdown or raw raw and convert. We'll just focus on code and markdown. Okay, so. Um, uh, how to differentiate them if I create a new a new cell, for example, clicking here and insert a cell below. Okay, the first thing that it will be created it is like kind of the same uh, output that we were seeing when that when we launched the IPython, uh, the IPython. So basically, um, the this is telling us that this cell it is in the code mode. Okay, since uh, it's, it's mode, we we'll just need to once more go to cell cell type and change to markdown. I will just show in a moment what's uh, what's markdown, okay? And if we wanna, so the nice things about the cells is that, for example, okay, if we just move it again into code and uh, we create a couple of them, and for example, we just import the file. Uh, we can, before doing nothing, this cell, uh, we can move it around, okay? We'll see in a moment what, that, what this, what does this mean? The way of moving these cells is with these um, uh, arrows here. Um, so, and the way to okay, the way to delete in the cells it is basically um, going to edit and delete cells. Okay, we just click on delete cells and they will disappear. Basically, we can also uh, 
um, tab that to twice the D key of our tab, if we just uh, of our keyboard, sorry, uh, if we tap it, tap it twice, it will also erase it. Um, one thing that I didn't say it is just to activate or enter into a cell. The thing we need to do it is to click on it or double click on it. And the way to get out of the cell of editing it is to click escape. Okay. If we see it in, in blue here, I just escape or get out of the of the cell. If I click on it, I will uh, I will just enter on the cell. Okay. So the way to run things that are in a cell, either they, if they are in code or either if they are markdown, it is to basically uh, either running the play the run button or uh, or basically if we go to our circuits in the keyboard, it is the shift enter. Okay. So for example, if I just click import and I click shift enter. I will run the code the uh, the code that it is inside. I will run the content that it is inside this cell, and we have seen that this number has gone from uh, from nothing to one. In, uh, in a bit. Okay. Um, so um, we'll, I will start first of all with uh, with markdown. Okay, the markdown cells because they are a bit more straightforward. So markdown, it is no more than okay. So once more to get into inside this uh, this cell, and just then double click on the cell or double click here in, on the text, and I will I get into the uh, into the cell. If I want get a, if I want to run the content inside, I click run, and I see what happens. I mean, what what happens? So why all these uh, cells? Um, are in row are basically because I'm trying to I double click on them and try to edit them. Uh, the markdown uh, and these cells, what we can, uh, and these cells are, as we, as I just said a moment ago, in a markdown type uh, because they, they don't contain this in um, input that we, hit, we see here. So markdown it is just. Um, a language that uh, it is very, uh, I would say, co convenient to uh, to to give uh, to give a structure and formatting to. Uh, it's, it is just a, a language to give uh, structure and formatting. So, and the good thing of uh, of it is that you can mix it in these cells in a, in a Jupyter notebook. So, uh, the way I will just give some kind of uh, type uh, type uh, tips of how to. How to use a very quick tutorial how to use uh, markdown so for example we can add different levels of headings uh, by adding the um, the slash uh, symbol if wanna if we want to see how this how how we how this it will see in reality we will just click run and we'll see that how how basically it, it sees so markdown is basically um a nice syntax that follow that has different uh, that different functionalities. It allows to stress uh, the text in different and useful ways. So basically, we can uh, uh, make the text in bold. We can um, uh, uh, italize it. We can italize and make it bold. We can also put text in a in a kind of syntax style. We can also, if we double click to see what we have exactly entered, add some code snippet snippets of the different program languages so for example we can uh, we can uh, we can include some 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 snippets about bash also about uh, python we can also include things in bash also in bash in uh, html but it also supports other kind of uh, other kind of uh, languages um also, Markdown allows including uh, different uh, HTML commands. So basically, if we wanna, if we write, if you know how to um, program a little HTML, HTML, you can already include uh, your content here. And the moment that you run it, uh, you don't will be able to render it and show it in a in a, in a nice way. Uh, with Markdown, you can basically create uh, different uh, uh, bullets, ballets, and lists. Okay, so the the way it is just like leaving spaces and indenting 
the different levels uh, to add to one level or another. So in the moment that we run this, we'll see the different how the different points or items will appear. Okay, the same thing as um, as for your list. Okay. Another thing is that uh, we can include uh, cool, um, text blocks, okay, in, in different uh, intensity levels. We can add uh, uh, separating lines um, in, in different ways. I mean, this is just a very quick uh, tutorial how to, uh, to to get used and how to introduce text to make your notebook your notebooks more appealing and and, and attractive because. Uh, We'll see in a moment what we can do with uh, with them. Um, also, you can include uh, hyperlinks links to the um, to uh, into Markdown. So basically, if uh, this is the way it will it will be shown. So if we click, so to include them, I, mean, I, I will. These notebooks are in the in the GitHub repository, so you can have a look. Uh, how this the syntax is done, so you don't need to follow exactly everything that I'm going through. It is just to show you all the different functionalities of Markdown. So if we want to include that deeper link, you can we can do it like this, and we of course it will work. If the uh, and here we are going to the, the school um, uh, GitHub repository, and also we can link sessions and go up into the code cells, for example. Um, okay, a uh, few more things that are quite interesting about uh, about the, the Markdown syntax it is that they support uh, LaTeX too. So I mean, they use the LaTeX uh, render to to display LaTeX in, inside Markdown. And basically, we can to enter the math mode, we will just need to type uh, the dollar the symbol, and to enter the display math mode, the, uh, twice the dollar the dollar symbol. And in this math mode, we can include or uh, we can include um, uh, la uh, latex as I said in a moment. So basically, from this ugly, let's say raw um, uh, text that we are including in the moment that we run it, we can see how um, how the render is and makes it and so and so a nice. Um, and so a nice um, sorry a latex uh, latex equation that we just uh, included. Okay. Um, also, we can include very easily tables. Uh, also, again, using some functionalities of latex. Um, in this case, we'll just by creating the tables with the with the pipe uh, symbol or the uh, and the and the dashes. We can create them like this. They don't they don't even need to be perfectly aligned. And we can create a nice, uh, a nice table, and also um, Markdown will be able to include images in a very similar way of how we do include uh, hyperlinks, um, but with a syntax a bit different. Okay, so for example, if we just uh, I, I know where this uh, link points to, so we know that we run it, we can basically uh, the Markdown will. Render this to show the image uh, the, to, the, to which it is pointing uh, the link. Okay. So, um, okay, I will just make a bit bigger the uh, my screen. Um, about kernels. So once more, kernel base. So basically, it is the engine that it is running, um, that it is making a cell run. Okay, uh, we will be able to change the kernel uh, of a notebook by the following. So clicking on kernels, change kernel, and if ever we had another kernel installed, we will be able to to sit here and install it. So, but this the point. The main point is that because. Jupyter notebook supports different programming languages. We can, we could have installed different kernels here for having, for example, R, the R programming language, Julia, Spark, and uh, different. Uh, and I think that it supports more than a hundred uh, programming uh, programming languages. It is a bit more. Yeah, I would say that this is the advanced part of uh, of notebook, so I will not go through. Creating in this uh, in this lecture, okay. 
Uh, all the documentation you can find it here, and there's a lot of uh, starting point to at, at this page. Okay, so we jump now um, to the uh, to the code cells. Okay, they work. Uh, they use they work as the usual IPython cells that we have not seen uh, before, but we will just see now. So basically, everything that we are running here, it is completely compatible one with what we have done in uh, with IPython. The reason uh, behind this is because the main kernel that it is installed when we install a Jupyter Notebook are, uh, is uh, precisely the IPython kernel, that it is no more than a Python kernel that runs, that make runs the, uh, the content of the, um, of the cells, okay? So uh, now we see that uh, the cells are in, uh, in in code mode, okay. Uh, we we may, we can also one one cell that it is in markdown change is type to code, and we will see here how it does in change. And then in the moment that we click run, I mean, of course, it will not run because it will it will be like if we will be writing to all of these into into Python. So there is no sense on going on on running this this cell in in code mode. Let's say in but I mean, you can. This is just to show you that you can easily change the type. Oh, sorry, so so type markdown. Um, okay, I was not choosing cor choosing correctly the the correct cell. So you need to choose the cell, go into the cell, and change it to the markdown. We'll see how everything changes, and in the moment we click on run, everything will get back to. Okay. So um, um, so now, if we want to see how these uh, these cells work, we can basically uh, start playing around with it. Um, we can add any kind of um, of code inside uh, inside of these cells. Uh, we can, for example, uh, run this import uh, numpy and uh, matplotlib. So the code that is inside here, please, we will not, will, I will not go into the code. If you have any kind of, this is very easy and not not optimized code, just to show examples. We'll have uh, lectures about NumPy and Matplotlib on the following days where we will really learn how to do, use them. These are just examples to see the functionalities and how things work in, in Jupyter, okay? So we can uh, declare um, different variables, for example, the x, uh, y, and different y's, or for what to, so for example, we just wanna plot uh, this, uh, make a nice plot about this, uh, these different curves, okay? Once more, we'll learn much better in a few days how to, how to use uh, Matplotlib, okay? So this is just for, for examples. Um, so we see that in the moment that we run these cells, the code that is inside will run. Uh, if we are, uh, in this case, we are using a kernel, uh, a Python kernel, so we need to, uh, to write things in, uh, in Python. We'll just be, and what we have done basically is to give some values to different variables and make and plot these variables, okay? And the nice thing that Jupyter has it is that the result it is shown just uh, just below. So we can we start seeing what we can use Jupyter for and the Jupyter notebooks for. So basically, it, it is it might be a very nice way to show results to colleagues, to your boss, to your maybe not to your parents or your grandmother or grandparent, but uh, there is a nice way to 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 see um, the things quickly. Okay, if we just type the typical, uh, uh, let's say, um, Python um, uh, Python commands, it will work uh, the, uh, in a similar way. So basically, in the notebook, it will display uh, the output of, of what we have done. If we make the output very, very large or, um, let's say, thousand ones, sorry, and we just run it, we'll see that the output, it will get collapsed, okay? So that uh, in a nice way, so that they don't, it doesn't show the thousand um, elements that we have just set to, to print. If we go and expand them, we just need to click here on the left and we'll basically show uh, and see the thousand 
the thousand element that it has uh, uh, created. And once more, to, if we click here, we just collapse again the, the output, sorry. Okay, so you have seen that every time that I'm clicking or, or running a cell, this number uh, increases, okay? This is uh, this what it shows is that the order in which we have run everything, the, I would say that the one nice thing, but it is a bit tricky, it is that uh, uh, we can go back. So for example, we will not need to type again all the code or like in IPython, we will not need to go up with the, uh, with the, key, uh, with the keyboard, uh, with the keyboard uh, to find what we have just inserted. So we can we have everything typed here. If we just, for example, make a, a typo, it will say, okay, this is invalid syntax. It will say why, basically, we will say, okay, we'll at some point managed to see that here is because it is, there is a missing parenthesis and we can run and rerun once more the um, these uh, cells this is a nice feature but we have to be a bit careful with it okay because for example if we are doing any kind of, of development or anything and then we just overwrite um, a variable, for example, we just create an array of uh, random numbers between uh, of 15 random numbers. Once more, uh, the, uh, if you have any kind of thought about the code, you can ask. But it is the purpose of the of the lecture is more to show the functionalities of of uh, Jupyter. So basically, um, what we are, what we have just done here, for example, if you want to see what I have done, is I can create a cell below, click X, and this will show that I have just created an array of 50 numbers between minus 100 and 100 of random integer numbers. And the problem of one of the problem of uh, Jupyter it is that if we have overridden or uh, overridden a variable that we wrote before, and we go up into some kind of uh, cell code that contains this, vari this variable and we run it once more. What we are doing is basically keeping the last value um, that it was saved, um, that it was saved. So uh, I will just say it once more. Here, uh, what we were doing it was declaring the X variable to plot nice things, okay? And then we were defining uh, three different curves. If we, uh, if on the contrary, for example, if I want to get this plot uh, that uh, I had before, I will just need to run again this cell and then run again the cell that plots everything. So we'll see, we have, we, we see that this, uh, the output, sorry, the, the, the output of these cells are, uh, is increasing uh, progressively. So, um, so, so that these are the last two one, uh, the last two cells that we have run. But once more, very careful with with overriding different variables and then running different uh, uh, code snippets. Okay. Also, uh, nice things that we can do. Well, I mean, basically, these cells they 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 accept any kind of uh, of uh, Python functionality. So we can, for example, define uh, a, um, a function where we plot, we plot things in, in subplots, and also uh, and, uh, and just below um, another function where we we plot everything in the same frame. So this this is the same. Also, basically, in the one that we have run these uh, cells we can for example if we create here a new cell we can do a start typing plot and it will appear the different the um, function that we have just loaded into the kernel okay so that so that this to happen and this to to work we we, we should first um have run the uh, the the cells so okay, this the examples are just below. I will just delete this cell without typing. So basically exiting the ed the editing mode, that it is clicking on exit and then typing and clicking twice on, on DD. And then now I will run uh, these two cells. So 
basically here what we have done is pass the same curves into the function that we have uh, declared before. So this is plotting things in three graphs separately. And uh, this one will uh, remake the plot uh, that we have just done before. But instead of typing all the all the lines, uh, we just include all of this into a into um, a function of on Python. Okay. Um, so the, the point to take home it is to be careful with uh, with Python in the, when developing because I mean the uh, the variables will it is very similar to Python the, the variables once you give random the value will be the last one you you run and they can be over or they can be overwritten basically. Another nice thing about uh, Jupyter is that we can uh, the documentation is shown quite. Uh, Quite nice. So basically, the same way to find documentation of a function, we can we can do it on on Jupyter, and we will see basically here uh, the documentation this way. Okay, uh, the doc string basically we can make it even bigger, and then to go out, we just click on escape. Um, okay, uh, sorry. Uh, so this will open a new tab and, and, and not on escape because I was, uh, uh, so if we return to our the tab where we had uh, Victor, we can continue. So once more, uh, we can open it in a new tab or directly close it, okay? Um, the nice thing about the, the IPython kernel, basically the kernel that it is running on IPython and uh, Jupyter, it is the, uh, that the cells are are have some cool functionalities that it is what called that what are called the, the multi cells. So these are all the functionalities that we can do in in uh, with the with inside a Jupyter notebook, but I will not go through, through all of them. Some nice things that we can do is like uh, type different commands in different um, in different uh, in different languages. So basically, for example, this will be the typical command that you will pass uh, the pass into a shell that will basically uh, ls our directory. Okay, the only the only thing to do how to do this is by adding a exclamation symbol before. This is uh, so. For example, if we have opened a a Jupyter notebook, and we find suddenly that we don't have installed a library, we can automatically automatically do it uh, from it. If we do in this case, so basically this will run in the same way as in a, as in a terminal, um, you know, and in, it, will, it will also plot a, a plot uh, the, uh, the the same the same output that in a terminal. So in this case, it tells us that the requirement is already uh, satisfied. Some, I would say, cool or nice examples that, uh, that, uh, that we can sh we can see with, with uh, these cells. It is, uh, for example, to compute the time that it takes uh, a, a, a code or a, a bunch of a code uh, to be run. So, for example, we just uh, use two different kind of, uh, of, of functions inside uh, inside Python. So, basically, the sum the sum the some uh, um, function to 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 some basically uh, ten thousand ones and also the same the same functionality but instead of uh, the one that comes by default in, in Python we will use the one that comes with uh, numpy numpy so basically we see that in this case uh, numpy is extremely much faster um, in any case well this is just an example of what we can do with uh, with the uh, with the, with the cells, uh, with the magic cells of, of the Jupyter notebook. And also, um, we can also run some things uh, in bash, like as if we, we were in a terminal. Also, uh, for example, if we have uh, um, uh, this is this is precisely as we were running a, um, everything in a terminal instead of getting out of the except that we are not getting out of the Jupyter notebook and running it directly here. Okay. So um, I, here I leave you with some 
useful and uh, useful links of uh, of the basic syntax of uh, of of Markdown and also other other different tutorials about uh, Jupyter and Jupyter notebooks and also a compilation of very interesting notebooks of different um, fields of, of science that you can have a look in it uh, in, in these days. Okay. So um, this is the very basic usage of, uh, of notebooks. You see that the nice thing of them is that we can uh, combine code and, and text in between them. So we can also plot results and see and, it's, and, and make very quick tests or uh, very easily. That they, they are, all, all the code it is basically nicely stored and we can go up and down uh, and run it again and modify it and rerun it again. And, um, and that's, um, okay. Uh, I will try to go a bit slower uh, in a moment. In any case, um, these notebooks are uh, in the Git repository uh, in the moment that you clone them. Uh, uh, I will just show them how to get to them. Okay. So if we go to the escape GitHub repository and we go here into the environment setup notebook lectures, you will find the three same notebooks that we will go through in this uh, in this lecture and exactly the same information that I'm giving and uh, it is inside these uh, these notebooks. Okay. In any case, uh, okay. Um, I will. I would prefer to to give all the all the content of the code and then answer to to questions. And then after this lecture, you will have time to play around. If you have any kind of doubt, you can don't hesitate to again once more ask through through Slack, contact us, and we will try to solve uh, all the doubts about uh, Jupiter in a moment. Okay. So once more, if I click, uh, if I get out of this tab and then close it, okay, this is the previous information. We see that we have that there's the notebook, the basic uh, tutorial is still on green, so the, this means that it is still running. One thing that I have forgot to set, and I will just um, and I will just show in this moment is that for so if we didn't close or we didn't shut down the kernel running the notebook if we open this notebook we will get exactly to the same point as we were before okay um so uh, this is not the the correct way of doing things so basically once you have finished with your with your with your notebook you should first of all say save the uh, the content and you can well, close the tab or I would say to close and halt. That means that basically it will kill the kernel running the notebook and so that the, the notebook is no, no longer running. Uh, we see that now in the moment that we get out of this tab, the, uh, the notebook icon is on gray, on gray. So if we open it again, despite that we see the, sa the same output as we leave the same time, okay? And we see the same order, and we see the, the order in which all the cells have been run. If we try to, for example, run this one, this uh, this cell, and we click on run, it will say, "Okay, plotting num subplots subplots is not defined." And we see that here appears a one, meaning that uh, we have well, this meaning that is the first cell to be run that uh, most probably this happens because we have forgot what we have opened a notebook that it was already closed and we are restarting and recreating a kernel. So um, one thing that we can do in the moment that we can open a notebook, it is to go to kernel and click on uh, restart and clear output or restart and run all the cells. And this will basically do it says so basically it will clear all the output of all the uh, cells specifically the ones on, on code and or it will clear the output and run them again so in the moment that we click here to for example uh, show how to start uh, and, sorry and uh, to start basically all the all the cells I, uh, it 
prevents us. I click on yes. We see that it takes a bit to run, okay? And basically it will run uh, one by one in order all the different, the different cells disappears because there was a cell containing basically and the display of the uh, documentation, okay? So once more, uh, we see that the first, uh, the first the cell to be run is the, is the first one out the, by order, by we will see only the, we see the outputs of those ones in, in cell mode. And we see once more that everything is uh, run as it is supposed. Here we see the plot. Uh, um, we see um, the output of the uh, of 10 uh, integer, yeah, random integers. And we see once more that the moment that we plot our nice graphs, this doesn't work because we have overridden the x variable uh, by creating another another variable because we, either we forgot it or most probably because we forgot it. So we can run again this cell that contains the correct x variable. It will increase uh, the cell. And in this case, we can run once more the two cells and see the, uh, the output. Okay, once more, we go to file, close and hold, and uh, we cancel, we save our content and we close and hold, okay? Perfect. Um, so I would also like to show a bit more advanced uh, features uh, about uh, about the Jupyter Notebooks or useful ways of how to present uh, results, okay? So uh, there are um, a very interesting library that is also included in the environment. We have already installed it with, with our environment.yaml uh, file that are the IPy widgets, okay? So the first thing that I will do is open again a new, a new Python, uh, Jupyter, sorry. Uh, Jupyter Notebook, and I will clear the output so that we'll go uh, one by one uh, running all the different um, all the different cells. So don't get okay. So don't get very stressed if you are if um, if you are new with Jupyter Notebooks. You will have a bit of this afternoon time to play around. And this is just to show uh, the very basic. Um, uh, functionalities, how to open, close, create things, close things, run things. And um, you can go through again uh, all the, uh, everything and, and ask, ask us. This part is a bit more advanced one, just to show and uh, just to try and show new, nice functionalities that we can do with, uh, with Jupyter. So for example, uh, we'll go, we will go through, through each, uh, each of, the, uh, of the cells. So basically what we are doing is importing different uh, methods and, function, and functions from the from this uh, IPython uh, widgets and, I, and IPython display that we'll show in a moment. So nice, nice things that we can do with the Jupyter as we have as we have seen that this a very, let's say, um, uh, interactive uh, interface. It is that we can create cool features this is, for example, this will this will be just a, a slider, but it is uh, moving between a, a minimum and a max value. Uh, we can also make this slider uh, instead of uh, plotting or showing uh, integers, uh, so uh, so float numbers, so basically uh, in, uh, uh, float numbers. We can also instead of uh, creating a a slider, also create. Uh, a float text where we can modify, modify them by, by these two arrows. So, okay, this okay. So I'm not go not not gonna go through all the different um, functionalities of this uh, of this library, but I will just uh, I will this this notebook is also for for you to have it and a look later and see you know, and try to well. And, and show the, the, the nice features that you can do with this uh, with this library. So as you saw, well, there's a, a way to create in here a button. To, we can click here and do things. We can also create a drop down where we can select things. 
the full list of IPython widgets, you can find it here. Another cool thing that we can do is like link two or more widgets, okay? So for example, like once more, I leave you here the code and you will have it a bit later. We, in the moment that we are modifying one, the other is modified. And you know, for example, in the moment that one we press right here, and the other will be modified. So we are linking uh, two different functionalities that are nice. Uh, we can create a bot on that, uh, right things. And uh, of course, we can mix all of these to create much more elaborated, uh, a much more elaborated let's say um, um interface where we can show things okay so at the moment we have not shown i have not shown i have not shown more than let's say the user functionalities uh, but you can see that you can insert a lot of things with uh, code uh, code blocks together with uh, with markdown blocks and where you are explaining what you are doing in this uh, in this um, in this blog, so then you can mix both text and code in a very nice and let's say uh, way to present it. Um, so we will once more um, the uh, well, uh, I will show an example with a small data set. Okay, we'll go through. I will not go through the code specifically. The, the important thing is to understand and see the nice things and the bad things about uh, Jupiter, okay? And uh, and then you you can have a look to this code later uh, your, uh, this, this afternoon. So what I'm doing, it is basically loading a, a small data set, okay? A data set it is no more than a compilation of data uh, that contains a similar or uh, common features, okay? I'm just rearranging the data set uh, in a way that we don't care. The only thing that I want to do with this, um, basically, I will want to show you this. So what we have just done, it is create a data set that contains information about, uh, about flowers, okay? Um, this is just a, a toy data set that it comes together with uh, scikit-learn, but it is a library that we will see along this, uh, along this, uh, this school. And we'll see that the, uh, the, uh, this data set that we have stored in a, what it is called a data frame. This part of the pandas, um, the pandas lecture that we will see in the following days. So, uh, this is just to show the Jupyter functionalities once more. Um, we see that basically this contains uh, 150 rows and five columns where we have different uh, different names of uh, flowers with a different uh, beta width, uh, sepal width, and all of this. So, for example, let's put a case in where we want to study uh, our supervisor tell us, uh, told us that uh, there is a new data taken and the, uh, the information that we have just recovered is the, is the, the um, well, all these uh, beta lengths and information about these, these flowers. Um, There are a couple of functionalities that, um, so we can see that we can, let's say, uh, explore very quickly uh, or see the information on some different uh, things that this uh, data frame contains. Or once more, all, all the details uh, will be given in, uh, in, in the next lectures. But, um, what I want to show is basically that we can, for example, create a nice, uh, let's say, a widget that for in case that, okay, we, we don't want to go through the 150 rows one by one, one by one. We can, for example, create, uh, this is a small snip called the snip set that in where we can basically choose to, from this data frame to make a selection of the a bursty color uh, target one that I don't I don't know what it is but it is just the, the kind of, uh, of plan that it, that we are that is inside the data set. This basically will make a selection of the hundred and fifty lines. Uh, depending on the on the type, we can also choose the the ones 
and now we have made basically the selection of our data set only only constraining this um, this Virginica ones um, we can also make interact uh, the we can also make the, the widgets interact between them so uh, instead of um, instead of making this work by hand okay we can also uh, include a, another feature that it is uh, interact one and add it into a decorator and um, this is a bit an advanced um, feature of python but uh, what allows so basically what it is what it does it is um okay well, let's not let's keep it simple so this uh, at interact in this specific case okay what it will do basically it is uh connect both of the uh, python widgets that uh, that i just showed that will I'll connect two or more python widgets okay so in this case, we can also create a small uh, function that basically selects uh, one of the columns of our data frame. And we can also add uh, a small slider. And we can, for example, to make a quick and an exploratory, um, a, well, we can make, basically make a quick and exploratory uh, um, search in our data frame by, uh, for example, selecting one of the columns. This is the petal length and modifying this um, this value so for example we just want to see all the uh, all the elements of this data frame that uh, contains uh, petal lengths larger than for example uh, 6.4 and we see that there are only these ones if we go very up or very high we see that there are none if we go very up to 1.5 we see that again there are a lot of them if we change to another feature of this data frame, we can also modify and uh, modify this slider so we, we can have a look to uh, what to. I mean, we can basically explore very quickly this uh, this uh, this data frame. Okay, so um, we have jump a bit and we'll go a bit fast in this part, but this is just uh, I wanted to show. The iPad widgets library that I think that is a very nice uh, way of showing results. Okay, um, the um, one problem that uh, might appear, for example, uh, with um, uh, in Jupyter notebooks, it is that uh, there is a lot of, of code that is displayed, and if you are using Jupyter notebooks to show any kind of um, any kind of uh, uh, results to your colleagues. Uh, your colleagues might get overwhelmed by the amount of code, or basically you you might not you might like not to basically show this uh, all the raw content of of Jupyter notebooks. So you can also copy and and, uh, and use this uh, this uh, small code snippet that it will basically include a, a small part in HTML. That what it will do it is basically create a, another uh, widget uh, that basically allows showing or, uh, or not or toggling or on our or off sorry the raw code of the uh, Jupyter notebook so basically if we go up now we will, we will all, only will be seeing what we have done in the the results of the cell test so we will in this case we will just be seeing the um, the, uh, the the Jupyter the, sorry the, uh, the widgets uh, we'll, we can play around with them, and the nice thing is that we will not be able to see, we will not see, sorry, the uh, the uh, the raw part of the code. So this, for example, for showing results, instead of showing the hundred lines of code or two hundred lines of code that you have created, uh, it is uh, it is quite uh, quite interesting and quite uh, quite attractive. I would say. Okay, so um, once more, you have this uh, um, this uh, Jupyter in the um, in the repository of the um, of the school. Um, I will go back to the presentation. So uh, uh, we have already seen what are these uh, IPy files and different kind of cells that we can uh, we can have inside of them. 
uh, what are exactly the kernel cells, and they, sorry, the kernel cells, the kernels, and although we have not seen how we can install uh, new kernels. Um, another thing that uh, I will just show in a moment, it is uh, the, uh, how we can share this uh, Jupyter notebook. So uh, basically the two more, more common ways of uh, R to use GitHub or the MV viewer. GitHub, it is the, uh, the, the hub repository, uh, um, the hub internet service where all the GitHub projects are, are stored. That also has a render to serve this. Uh, Jupyter notebooks and this MV viewer. It is another. Um, sorry, this is okay. We open it here. It is a, a simple way to precisely share and display a uh, Jupyter notebooks. So uh, if you upload them here, uh, well, it's not uh, so, sorry. We don't. You don't need to upload them here. So basically, you can paste the GitHub uh, uh, URL or any URL that uh, points to a Jupyter notebook. So for example, we can make an example and go to our Escape 2020, 2021 uh, school, click on, uh, on the uh, advanced features that we just seen in a moment, copy and we'll see that how everything is, sorry, how everything is displayed here, okay. Um, we can go to our, the MV viewer and paste this uh, this link, and basically we will see uh, the uh, the output of the uh, of the Jupyter notebook transform into HTML. That uh, I will show you what does it mean. In, in, okay, but. This is just due to have in mind that you can paste here any, any other Jupyter notebook and see and see its its output. So um, also the so in case you want to export uh, the Jupyter notebooks into uh, or share them with colleagues that they might not be very technical, you can export this uh, the i uh, the IPI. MD files into HTML, LaTeX, and PDF. PDF. Uh, the only thing that for LaTeX and PDF you will need extra libraries. Also, you can run ex export them into as to ex executable scripts. Um, we can just make a quick test um, in a moment. Uh, okay, I will leave it at to the end of the lecture. Okay. I want to show another thing before before finishing. And okay, we have also seen the different let's see advanced features or or unuseful functionalities to how to present uh, to present results that we have uh, seen the Jupyter widgets, how to hide code, and in a moment I will present I will show you how to create a presentation using uh, their notebooks. So. To sum up a bit, uh, so the Jupyter Notebooks, I will say that they're a nice tool to make exploratory analysis or a way to resolve, uh, uh, sorry, a, way, a nice way to present the results. Although, I mean, this, this there is a, a, a comment here in the case that if you include, uh, if you make a Jupyter Notebook with a lot of code, this would may, maybe make, uh, you will make uh, the, uh, the listener get lost. And personally, I will find I find that this uh, this tool it is uh, maybe not that optimal for developing, as we have seen that uh, the, how the how do the different cells work. So basically, if one one cell can override the content of the of the next one. So for developing, um, personally, I don't use it. I don't use it a lot. There are other uh, let's say uh, tools that are more that are a bit more adequate for this. And also to show results in, a, in between large amount of codes, maybe it is not the best um, tool. Um, okay, so, and the last thing that I would like to present, so once more, we just save the, uh, the Jupyter notebook and we close and, and hold, we close, we go back to our uh, Jupyter notebook, uh, um, 
entry baits, uh, we see that it is still green. So we want, we, one thing we can do it is like click on it and just shut down. Okay. And um, this should, uh, um, maybe if this is not shutting down, it's because you still have this, uh, this, oh, okay. Maybe sometimes it takes a bit to, to close other other times is because you still have this tab open in another place in your browser and you lost it. So let's say that there's a colleague that has sent us um, uh, a nice study that he has done. Uh, this is just an example of uh, exploring the Lorentz uh, differential equations. Okay, so uh, once more we can see how. We can include in a Gitter notebook and an introduction with in Markdown where we can explain what, uh, what is some things and then we can, um, I'm gonna clear that output first, okay. And then we just include some kind of, well, all the kind of uh, code that we wanna do to basically, in this case, compute, compute the trajectories and plot the results, okay. So if we just open this not this Jupyter notebook and we see all of this. It's like a bit like whoa, okay. Uh, if I'm very interested, I can go through each of the uh, lines of the codes. But uh, if I just want to show the results, maybe it is not the best way to do it. Uh, despite that, for example, in this notebook, I mean, if we just run it, uh, it contains very uh, very nice ways, very sorry, very cool. Uh, um, pictures and, and precisely it includes a, um, an IPython widget where we can basically play around with it and see how the different trajectories of uh, of these Loren attractors changes between the different parameters and the, uh, uh, the different parameters that we are modifying. Okay, so this will be this to show, uh, let's say, uh, uh, the results or, uh, of, or of any study is a very attractive way of using it. But uh, yeah, I will say that this kind, this all this amount of code, I would not like to show. So, for example, the one thing you can do it is show precisely this, uh, include this uh, height uh, row code that I just saw before, so that basically uh, they are, uh, you will not display this output. Um, but the important thing that I would like to show is um, if we go to edit, sorry, view, and we just uh, toggle the cell toolbars, here we get a bit into the advanced features of the Jupyter Notebook, where we, if we go into slide shows, we can basically uh, choose a kind of uh, slide type for each of the cells, okay? Um, there are different ways of presenting and, create, and create, creating presentations from uh, Jupyter Notebook, but oh, I will say that the most straightforward one and cool one it is using the RISE uh, library. So it is a library that again it is also installed in the, uh, in the school environment, and it toggles basically this. Um, it, it allows you to to click on this button, okay, that says enter exit the RISE uh, slide show. So if choosing the important the first uh, the first cell and toggling the slide the rise one, we can see that we enter in the slides mode and we can choose the different cells how to be displayed and everything. So uh, and also we can show even we can also show like the different parts of the code that are that are used uh, that also done. Uh, it is important to show what we have done in, in terms of developing and coding, but you know, we can basically show it in a better and nicely way. Uh, we can make a nice presentation out, out of a Jupyter notebook instead of rather going scrolling down like this and saying, okay, uh, just focus on this cell and things like this. So, I mean, I, I found it that it is a very interesting and nice, uh, and nice feature. Uh, and that's it. And the, thing is, the good thing of this uh, library is that um, maybe for showing the large amounts of code, it is not it is not very optimized. But uh, we can uh, still click into the cells and run them. Okay. And another good thing is that um, sorry. Okay. Uh, let's go out. Uh, 
and uh, we got into the okay so sometimes it doesn't work so we just restart and run everything again but the good thing is that it allows the um the Jupyter, the IPy widgets uh, to be included in the presentation. Okay, so this is demo problems. Uh, my uh, my kernel just crashed. So basically, what I'm doing it is restarting again and run, run all the cells. This sometimes will, might happen. So so that's it. Okay. So once more, if we get into the rise, we see that how everything is displayed. The way they are. The th the way the slides are displayed are chosen by the type of, of cell that I just uh, showed you in a moment. The nice thing that I wanted to show you is that. Okay, so it doesn't want to work now, uh, but uh, um, uh, this. Uh, okay, now yes. So um, we see that. Uh, the Python widgets uh, are also, um, you can basically include them in, the, uh, in, in this uh, presentation mode. You can also modify, as I said, the content of the, of the cells and run them again. Okay. Uh, and you can also move by, by, the, uh, by different uh, arrows and cursors. Okay. So once more, I leave this information here for you to have it a bit late, late, later. There are a couple of more things that I would, uh, I would like to show. That it is the um, Jupyter Lab environment. Okay, this is no more than exactly the same that uh, as we have seen. So okay, uh, what I'm gonna do now it is sorry, um, quit the Jupyter Notebook server. Okay. So we, we have to stop it. Now, basically, we try to open up the notebook. It doesn't work because we have basically uh, closed the server. So we can close the, the tabs without any kind of problem. And, um, and we go out. So if we go back up to our terminal, we can type Jupyter uh, Lab instead of Jupyter Notebook. This is what it will open, basically. It is uh, another display, a bit similar as the, uh, I would say that is the evolution of the Jupyter, uh, of the Jupyter notebooks. So it is a bit this, the same. So it is um, a nice display where you can basically do, thing, or do things. It has the exploratory uh, part here. It is a bit more user-friendly in the way that, for example, if, if I want to, um, so you can see here all the uh, all, all the content within your directory. So it can, for example, this is the, uh, the presentation of the uh, of the Jupyter notebooks that we are just seeing here. Uh, it is a bit uh, it is very interactive in the way that you can here open different terminal also oh, terminals uh, windows. Here we can have a terminal. So here we are in the. Um, uh, here we are in the uh, sorry um, um, so we can directly open notebooks consoles uh, we're using python 3 markdown files uh, new terminals in my case you should only find this this is just a, a little problem that happens in my in my in my case but here i see everything that it is inside so it is just opening a new environment it will have everything included Mm, for example, here I want to open the Lawrence uh, attractor example once more. And we are inside the Jupyter Lab, that is this environment that contains a bit of everything. And with these windows, you can work uh, and modify them a bit around. You can have a terminal and put it uh, down here while, I don't know, you are doing things at the same time that you are developing here or some things and you want to see the results. So it is a I would say that it is a, an environment um, uh, an environment that makes a bit everything um, that uh, that allows you to open in PDFs, uh, Jupyter notebooks, terminals, and uh, a bit of it. 
Okay, this part we have, I mean, I will let you play around. Um, there's five minutes till the end of the lecture. The last thing that I would like to show, but um, it is the binder that we have already spoke about it. I will, okay, so um, very quickly, if we just, for example, go to our escape repository, and we, go, we go down here. We can see that we can bind bind this uh, this repository. Uh, I have already bind it bind it before. Okay, I have not done it before. If we click if we click here, this will take a bit to to get started. But basically, what you are what you will be doing it is uh, creating a Jupyter uh, notebook instance in the cloud. So basically, you will not need to have all this code installed. The only problem that, uh, that, so basically you can ask, okay, so why, why we are not using Binder uh, to run all the content of this code, of this school, sorry. Basically because this is just online, so basically if uh, anything crashes, um, uh, you will not be able to recover information. It's a bit more complicated to, to get used to. So basically, once more, we see the Jupyter uh, interface Jupyter Lab interface. In this case, it is of the escape repository. Where we will basically go to those, we will basically only contain inside. We can see the environment file that it will open in a, in a, in a, in a new um, in a new tab. And basically, uh, is that so you can in okay if in the moment that the, the Jupyter notes will be uploaded and will be correctly linked. Uh, you will normally be able to open the notebooks here and basically don't need to have the notebook installed on your computer to be able to run uh, the hub. But once more, I mean, there is a problem of everything is online and you will not be able to work correctly uh, with it. Okay, so this last part has gone a bit into uh, very quickly. Um, this, uh, uh, go ahead if there's any uh, important question to be asked. And, uh, the slides and the encrypted uh, notebooks are on the repository. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Enrique, for this detailed overview. Um, I, f I guess just a general comment. I mean, there will be plenty of time um, that, that participants can actually use the notebooks and explore the features themselves in the, in the coming days. Um, just in case like this was um, maybe maybe too much as an input for the for the beginning. Um, okay, we followed uh, the questions in Slack. So there were um, a lot of specific questions that we could all already answer. Um, and like an overwhelming majority of people was able to install and run the notebooks already. So this I think is, is really nice. Uh, let's come to a few more specific, uh, sorry, general questions. So one of them was, um, what would be the problem to leave the kernel running in the notebook? Um, so if you have, either if you're working with multiple notebooks or for example, if you're uh, changing notebooks. Say it again, so which, which would be the problem of? Which would be the problem? So if you leave the kernel running in the background, but if you don't use it, for example. Okay, so um, it does depend. I mean, if you have a, the only thing it will be running on the background. So uh, if you suddenly close your computer, you will basically close, uh, kill the uh, the kernel too. Um, normally, there will be and there will not be any kind of uh, conflicts be between different uh, notebooks and kernels if you have different both notebooks and kernel open at the same time. But just to, it is just a um, a point to say a point to underline that. If you have a, a, a code that it is running that takes three hours and you leave it in the background, uh, that it is updating plots uh, in, a, in a notebook and then you are having it a look uh, from time to time, if you just suddenly close it, you will basically kill the, uh, the process. That's it. So it is like a process. If you leave it uh, run, it will run. If you kill it, uh, you kill it. And I guess, I mean, if you probably have too many of those running in the background, then it could just eat up your resources at some point. Okay, thanks a lot. And um, there was another question. This was rather specific, but I think it can be maybe answered in a, uh, in a more general, well, so general way. So the, there was someone asking um, about using PyCharm 
um, and whether there's Jupyter Notebook related functionality. I guess the question goes into the direction of what are other, other front ends to be used with, with notebooks? Um, okay, so Python it is a specific development environment for Python uh, that also allow, has some nice features uh, let's say to, to basically to it allows to display notebooks and the content of notebooks um there is another one that is included with uh, with anaconda that is called a spider they, they are very similar they are very uh, they seems a bit uh, like jupyter lab so you have different uh, tabs and screens that you can move around and play around and and do things at the same time so have a terminal and a notebook and update things um and uh, um, basically, uh, well, that's, I mean, it is very specific for, for Python, I would say. It's not uh, for other programming languages, I will not uh, recommend it. Okay, thanks a lot. There was another question um, on the IPython widgets and, and interactive use of the notebook. So one question was whether sliders and just in general interactive things can be outputted in the plots and saved for presentations. Yes, as um, um, uh, okay, depends of on the kind of presentation that you are showing. So if everything you are if you are um, export exporting a Jupyter notebook into a, a PDF, I don't have. I'm pretty much not. I'm pretty much sure that you will not be able to to export the the sliders. That's precisely why that this Rice uh, library is cool because I mean basically you can show. Um, the content of the notebooks while or during a presentation. Okay, thanks a lot. I mean, as, as far as I know, I think, for example, if the notebook is exported to HTML, then there are ways actually to make the interactivity work again um, using some extensions that are based on JavaScript. But this is very specific stuff. Yeah. Okay, uh, let me just scroll through this Slack. Um, there was again, a question on the interactive use of the interact decorator. The question was, um, which kind of input values will be determined uh, with this kind of widget and how is it defined? And um, I think this was probably a part that was maybe just a little bit fast for some people. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the question is really how to define um, which part or how do you interact um, with the object using this interact decorator and how do you set it up and define it? Okay, um, how, how do you interact with the ports you said? Uh, I can just read the question explicitly again. So how does the interact decorator choose which kind of input values will be determined by which kind of widgets? Okay, so uh, the interact, okay. So it is, a, um, it is a bit tricky to use it, um, but basically what you are defining before it is the the details of this um, of this widget. So basically, you are telling the inter the interactor how to connect between them and what to, to display specifically. So uh, it won't. It, there's no magic behind. If you are basically defining a drop down with uh, five uh, five lists, you will do. I mean, or allowing the drop down to show five five entries, you will, I mean, this will be only the, the possibilities to be shown. The same way that if you define a slider uh, between C100, uh, this will be what the interactor, what the um, the creator will, will see and connect. In any case, uh, uh, the, the, well, the decorators and basically the connection of, of five, bit, five widgets, it is, uh, it is tricky. It is, uh, there's always some details, I mean, it is, so I will suggest to start with very simple examples and then increase the difficulty. So, yeah, go ahead. Okay, thanks a lot. I think this was basically it for the general questions in the Slack channel. Again, I mean, you can always ask further questions in the corresponding Slack channel and we're gonna be present to, to answer them offline and, and after the lecture. Um, we've seen a few other questions related to the content of the repository. This is maybe just one general remark to make. And um, so some people missed, for example, the, the notebooks that you, you were showing. Um, and the explanation was that they already cloned the repository last week. And the solution in this case is just to update the re repository using git pull. 
Um, but tomorrow we are going to have an extensive tutorial on Git and introduction to, to Git. And there, I think everything will be shown, shown again. And this will be, um, or this will help you then to keep the content up to date during the course of the school. Yeah, yeah and maybe you will, well, this is maybe, a, a, I would say an exercise for Max for tomorrow. If in the moment you open, some notebooks uh, and the moment you are opening them, you are basically changing the content of the notebooks because of different uh, reasons. This might affect the Git interaction between them. So I will, well, in any case, I will leave this uh, to explain to Max how to recover original states of a Git repository and what and how to do them for basically for tomorrow. Okay, let me thank Enrique again for the introduction and, and setup today. So I think that's it for today. And then we're gonna start tomorrow at nine again with the introduction to Git and the Git hands-on session. So thanks everyone for, for joining us um, and see you again tomorrow at nine o'clock. Thank you everybody. Bye. Thanks, Axel.